Hello, my name is Taylor Ross. I'm an Eximetry Ambassador and the owner of Frustum Virtual in Los Angeles, California. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to switch between scenes or environments using Eximetry DE Composer and Unreal Editor for Eximetry. So if we open the Eximetry documentation for this, it's called Switching Scenes with Levels. This documentation will be linked in the description of this video. You'll see that there's two different ways to do this. There's Level Switch with Open Level and Level Switch with Stream Level. I'm going to be focusing on the section called Level Switch with Stream Level because this is a seamless transition between levels. In the documentation, there are two ways to do Level Switch with Stream Level. First, we need to create a persistent level. This persistent level will function as a parent level, making editing between the levels easier. The levels under the persistent level are called sublevels or stream levels. They can be switched using the load stream level or unload stream level blueprint nodes. If we scroll further down in the documentation, we will find a section that is called Seamless Transition Blueprint. The first blueprint that we will find under Seamless Transition Blueprint will allow us to trigger which level we would like to load in Eximetry DE Composer. This blueprint uses two triggers that are associated with two different levels. These triggers will be visible in Eximetry DE Composer so that you can easily switch between scenes. The logic in this blueprint can be used to create more than just two triggers, but if you are working with more than two levels, Eximetry recommends using a different blueprint, which we will also cover in this tutorial. So I'm going to minimize my documentation. I will open the Unreal Engine project that I've prepared for this tutorial. The only changes I've made to this project are creating this levels folder. You can see that I have three levels available. I want to seamlessly be able to transition between these levels. The first thing that we need to do is create our persistent level. By default, when you create a blank project using the Unreal Editor for Eximetry, the level that's labeled main will be your default level. You can use this level as your persistent level if you'd like. I'm going to create a new level that will act as my persistent level. I will just go ahead and open the levels folder that I created. I will right click anywhere inside this folder, and then I will select level. I'll give this a name. I'll call mine persistent level. Now I will double click on this level to open it. The persistent level that I created should be completely blank. You can see this in the outliner on the right hand side. Next we will navigate to window in the upper left hand corner and select levels. This will open the levels panel. I will click and drag this tab to dock it next to my details panel. So now I have my details panel and my levels panel. We can now see a persistent level in our levels panel. Each of the levels that we add to our levels panel will be our sub levels. We will be able to create blueprint logic that allows us to switch between these sublevels. For the first example, I'm going to use two levels, so I will just click and drag my levels into the level panel, level 1 and level 2. In the outliner, you can see that all the objects and meshes that are in these levels have been added to the persistent level. Our levels panel has these visibility toggles that will allow us to hide and view all of the objects or static meshes of these levels. You can use this visibility toggle to only view the level that you're currently working on. With level 2 hidden, you can see that my outliner only has the static meshes for level 1. The level that's highlighted in blue in your levels panel is the level that you're currently editing. So with level 1 highlighted in blue, I know that I'm currently editing or adding objects to level 1. You can double click on any level in the levels panel to begin editing it. You can also use the current context box in the lower right hand corner of the viewport to change between your levels. For the next step, make sure that persistent level is selected. You can see that persistent level is selected in our current context. Navigate to Eximetry at the top, select add camera. We're gonna add green camera, virtual plus tracked. You just wanna make sure that you're adding your Eximetry camera to your persistent level and not level one or level two. If you add your Eximetry camera to any level other than your persistent level, this process will not work. Now that we've added our Eximetry cameras to our persistent level, and we have a brief understanding of how persistent and sublevels work, we need to change some project settings. So we will navigate to Edit, Project Settings, select Maps and Modes on the left hand side, find the Default Maps section. We need to change our Editor Startup Map and Game Default Map to the persistent level that we created. I will select the drop down next to Editor Startup Map and search for Persistent Level, and then I will select it. I will also select Persistent Level for the Game Default Map. Once our Editor Startup and Game Default Map are set to the Persistent Map, we can close our project settings. Make sure that we still have our Persistent Level selected in the Levels panel. Navigate to this Blueprint dropdown and select Open Level Blueprint. We need to open the Level Blueprint for our Persistent Level. The Persistent Level Blueprint is where we will add the logic that Eximetry needs to understand that we want to trigger the loading and unloading of each level. Now I will navigate back to my Eximetry documentation. This is the easiest way to add the Blueprint logic that we need to tell Eximetry what we want it to do. There are two Blueprints that are provided by Eximetry. 
there's one that triggers between two levels, and then there's one that's switching between more than two levels. The difference between these level blueprints is that one is using triggers and the other is using integers. The level blueprint that is using triggers is only set up to trigger two different levels. The level blueprint that is set up to use more than two levels is using integers. We will be covering the use of both of these blueprints in this tutorial. I will start by using the first blueprint that you see, allowing us to trigger between two different levels. We could try to recreate this blueprint from scratch, but because that could be very time consuming and confusing, Eximetry provides this blueprint in the documentation. In order to get this blueprint from the documentation, I will click in this box. I'll hit Control A on my keyboard to select everything, and then I will hit Control C to copy it. Once I've copied this text, I'll navigate back to my level blueprint. I will click anywhere in the level blueprint to select it, and then I will hit Control V on my keyboard to paste this blueprint. Once this blueprint is copied into our level blueprint, we can see that the event begin play is plugged into a sequence. This is allowing us to create triggers that we will see in Eximetry DE Composer to allow us to change between these two levels. There is also a Git Eximetry scaler that will allow us to control the delay or time that it takes for the level to be visible once we trigger it. By default, this delay is set to 1. I wouldn't recommend changing this value in the blueprint because we will have control of it once we open Eximetry DE Composer. This delay is necessary because the initial seconds after the level is loaded can still be resource intensive for the computer to display seamlessly. Now that we're set up with the blueprint that we copied from the Eximetry documentation, we need to make sure that this blueprint is calling to the proper levels. We just need to replace and tell Eximetry what levels need to be loaded in these two sections. I will start by selecting Compile and Save in the upper left hand corner. This blueprint doesn't require us to create any variables. In the next blueprint that we will be creating, we need to create variables, but this one looks good. You can see in the compiler results that there are no errors for this blueprint. Now all we need to do is add the levels that we want to be loaded. I will undock my level blueprint so that we can click and drag our levels directly into this blueprint. I will start by selecting level 1 from our levels panel and dragging it directly into this blueprint. I will dock my persistent level blueprint again to make this more visible. We need to replace the level that's in this blueprint that we copied from the Eximetry documentation and make sure that this return value is connected to all of the same places. If you hover your mouse over any of these blue lines, it will show you where it is connected. So I will just click and drag from the return value to this target, hover my mouse over the next blue line, find where it's connected, and then I will click and drag from the return value to this target, and for the last line, find the target, return value to target. The level that you added to the blueprint should now be connected to all of the target values. I will undock my level blueprint once again, resize my window, and now I will click and drag level two from the levels panel into our blueprint. Now we just need to repeat the process that we did for level one, connecting our return value to all of the targets. I will find the Git streaming level that we need to replace and connect it to all of the different targets that this level is currently connected to. Once you've made these connections, you should now have the levels that you want to be able to trigger from Eximetry DE Composer populating this blueprint. Once we have the levels replaced in this blueprint, we can hit Compile and Save. There are no errors in our compiler results, so everything's working properly. Now that our Unreal Editor for Eximetry project has been set up correctly and our blueprint has been modified, we're going to go ahead and cook our project. Navigate to the Eximetry tab at the top and select Cook Content for Eximetry DE. If you would like, you can open your output log to view this process. This shouldn't take long for my project because it's so simple. If you've done everything correctly, you should get a message that says Build Successful, Cooking Complete. We can now save and minimize our Unreal project and open Eximetry DE Composer. Go ahead and select Start. I'll navigate to New, Compound, or Control N on my keyboard, and then in Common Studio, Camera, Mixed Cam Unreal, I'll drag in my Mixed Cam Unreal 3x3. Once that loads, I need to add my Unreal Engine project, so I'll navigate to my file browser, I'll navigate to the location of this project, I'll click and drag that directly into my Eximetry Compound. Now I need to connect all of the pins. If you need help with this process, we have a ton of other videos on our channel. Be sure to check out all of the different videos that cover all the different compounds and types of cameras. 
For this video, I want to focus on the triggers that will allow you to switch between scenes. So I'm just going to fast forward through the entire setup. If you need a more detailed explanation of any of the processes that I'm fast forwarding through right now, be sure to check out those other videos. Once everything is set up, we can navigate back to our new compound. At the bottom of our Unreal Engine project in the compound, you will see Load Delay, Load Level 1, and Load Level 2. With the Unreal Engine project selected in the compound, you will see all the settings on the right hand side. At the bottom of these settings, you will see the triggers for Load Level 1 and Load Level 2. These are the triggers that we set up in our level blueprint in the Unreal Editor for Eximetry. You can see the names of these triggers here, and you can change them if you'd like. You would have to go back through the cooking process. So now if I select the trigger for Load Level 1, Level 1 will be loaded in my preview. I can also select the trigger for Load Level 2, and now Level 2 will be loaded. So anytime that I select either of these triggers, it will load the level that's associated with that trigger. Above our Load Level 1 and Load Level 2 triggers, we have the Load Delay setting. You can input a value in the Load Delay setting to change the amount of time that it will take before that level is visible in Eximetry DE. The delay can be necessary because the initial seconds after the level is loaded can still be resource intensive for the computer to display seamlessly. I'll change the load delay back to 1. Now I'll go through the process for if you have more than two levels that you'd like to switch between. I'll just navigate back to my Unreal Engine project. I'm going to use the same level blueprint that we've been working on. In this level blueprint, I'm just going to hang on to the two levels that I've already added, level 1 and level 2. So I'll just move those two levels out of the way before I delete this entire blueprint. So I have level 1 and level 2. I'll delete all of this logic, delete this extra level that came with that blueprint. So now all I have in the level blueprint is the two sublevels that I had in my level panel. I'll navigate to the level folder that I created and drag level 3 into my levels panel. I'll navigate back to the Eximetry documentation and find the section that says switching between more than two levels. Again, we will find the box for the blueprint provided by Eximetry. Control A to select it all, Control C to copy it, open our level blueprint, click anywhere and Control V to paste it. Once we have this logic added to our blueprint, I need to select the levels that come with this blueprint and delete them. It's these three levels. These three levels are connected to a make array node, so I just need to replace them with the levels that I would like to switch between. I will just connect my levels to this array, so level 1 to 0 and level 2 to 1. Now I need to add my third level to this blueprint. I will just click and drag level 3 into my level blueprint from my levels panel, and then I will connect it to the array. Now I'll select compile in the upper left hand corner. You'll see that we have all of these errors in our compiler results. This is because we need to create these variables. In the compiler results, you can click on this white text. We can then right click on level to load and select create variable level to load. We need to do this for all of the variables. So I will find all the different variables that have error underneath them. And I will right click and select create variable. We can then compile our blueprint. In order for this to work, there should be no errors in your compiler results. You can also see the three variables that we've created under variables on the left hand side. I'll compile and save, and then I can close my level blueprint. Once the blueprint is compiled and saved, we navigate back to the Eximetry tab and select Cook Content for Eximetry DE. We can open our output log again to watch this process. Build successful, cooking complete. We can navigate back to our Eximetry project, select our compound, look for your Unreal Engine project, and hit this chain. This chain will refresh all of the project settings for the Unreal Engine project on the right hand side. You can see that at the bottom of our Unreal Engine project settings, we only have one trigger now, and then we have a level to load option followed by an integer. If I navigate back to my Unreal Engine project, open my level blueprint, you can see that in the make array node, we have zero, which is level one, we have 1, which is level 2, and then we have 2, which is level 3. So if I input any of those integers and hit trigger, it will open that level. I will change my level to load setting to 1 and hit trigger. This opens level 2. Now I'll put in 2 and hit trigger. This should open level 3. So basically, using this system, it will always start at 0 and then begin counting up. If we have more than three levels that we'd like to switch between, we just navigate back to our level blueprint. We'll hit this add pin button on our make array, and now we'll have a pin to add another level. 
In Xymmetry DE, you would just be using 0, 1, 2, or 3 to input the integer of the level that you'd like to load. I only have three levels, so I'm just going to right-click on this pin and delete it. The link to the Xymmetry documentation that has these blueprints will be in the video description of this video. Being able to copy and paste these blueprints directly from the Xymmetry documentation will save you a lot of time, so I would highly recommend doing it this way rather than trying to build these blueprints from scratch. I'm just going to navigate back to my Unreal Engine project. I will compile and save my level blueprint. Hopefully this video was helpful in showing you how to switch between scenes or environments in Unreal Editor for Xymmetry and Xymmetry DE Composer. We showed you two different ways of switching between scenes using triggers or integers. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.